Welcome back friends. I hope you're doing awesome. I'm going to share my uh, tips and tricks that I use when making my creams, my lotions. Um, I've gotten several emails and questions about my process. So I'm going to share with you how I make my creams, my lotions, and I also have several videos um, with detailed with my detailed process um, so i'll leave that linked in the description box but i'm just going to share this with you um, so let's jump right in and if this is your first time stopping by my name is esther and i make diy natural hair and skincare videos and i also sell my products on my website if you want to check that out i'll have my website linked so let's jump right in So to get started making any type of cream or lotion, the main ingredient you need is emulsifying wax. So there are so many different emulsifying waxes out there and I get a lot of questions about emulsifying waxes, which one to use, which one is best. Really it's a matter of preference, um, depends on what type of product you're making. Um, if you want something that's natural, EcoCert approved. Um, but I like Olivem 1000. Um, you, you really just have to test out different emulsifying waxes and determine which one you like the most. So the thing with the creams and lotions, um, the more emulsifying wax you use, um, most will re usually result in a thicker product and the less you use usually will result in a thinner product like more of a lotion type consistency but i always recommend just follow the um, suggested usage rates from the supplier um, so for example if we go over to lotion crafter and check out olivem 1000 here they will typically tell you um, what usage rate they suggest so something like maybe a lotion or serum they recommend three to four percent and something like a lotion and cream, they recommend seven to eight percent. From personal experience in using Olivem 1000, the highest I've used it at is six percent, and my product was thick, thick, thick. I've also used it at four percent, and my product was also thick. Um, so you want to play around with it. If you want a, um, a lotion, I would recommend using it at maybe two to three percent. That is just from my own experience. So here is a suggested list of emulsifying waxes that I've personally used. Do your research and determine which one you would like to use. Um, so with the emulsifying wax, you would add that to your oil phase when you are making your cream or lotion. So the next thing to consider is a co-emulsifier. Um, so I have made um, lotions in the past without one and they actually came out stable um, but co-emulsifiers thickeners help with the stability of your finished product um, so something like xanthan gum if you're using an emulsifying wax like olivem 1000 xanthan gum is very very helpful in making your finished product to be stable um, so those are just things to consider um, there are other emulsifying waxes that you don't really need um, a thickener like xanthan gum um, i tend to use cetyl alcohol in my creams and lotions and really that's all i use um, i've used like i said olivem 1000 without a thickener and it was stable and i've used olivem 1000 with a thickener and my lotion fell apart so it really depends on how you combine your ingredients how you mix everything and of course this will also go in your oil phase so for the water phase um, you you just want to pay attention to things like active ingredients maybe something like vitamin c your liquid extracts um, those are things you don't want to include in your water phase um, while you're heating it up because those are sensitive ingredients and you don't want to um, ever heat up something like vitamin C or a liquid extract um, because they will lose their benefits and then another thing when you're making your cream or lotion you want to take note of the weight 
so the weight of your jar that contains your water your ingredients you want to take note of that weight because um, some of that water is going to be lost during the heating process so take note of the weight just write it down while you're making your cream or lotion for the heating process I usually suggest a range of 158 to 168 degrees Fahrenheit as a general guideline when I'm heating up my jars um, you usually want your jars to be within the same temperature of each other to be honest most times when I make my creams or lotions very rarely do I have them at the same temperature but I usually have them maybe within 5 to 10 degrees of each other so if my oil jar is maybe 165 degrees Fahrenheit and maybe my water jar is maybe 155 56 degrees Fahrenheit the goal is just to have them within the same temperature so when you combine them the whole process of um, is it emulsification everything just happens properly and they're within the same temperature of each other but that's just a general guideline don't stress yourself out trying to get the exact temperature very rarely do i have the exact same temperature but i have them within five to ten degrees of each other so the next thing you want to do is replace any water that has been lost during the heating process um, this is important because once again this is a formula it adds up to a hundred percent so you want to be as accurate and precise as possible when making your cream or your lotion so once you've replaced the water lost then you're going to combine both phases together some people add oil to the water some water to oil honestly just combine both phases together and then you want to use your stick blender so the blending process is what will make or break your lotion or your cream so you want to stick blend for at least two to three minutes this is going to ensure that your finished product is stable there's no separation and um, so some emulsifying waxes are different so example would be olive m1000 Olive M1000, just from my experience using it, tends to be a little bit temperamental sometimes. So you might want to um, stick blend for maybe two to three minutes and then switch over to your hand mixer. Um, but the other waxes I use, Emulsifying Wax NF, Montanov, um, and even Ritamol Say SCG, I never have that problem. I just stick blend for like three to four minutes and I'm good. So just take your time, stick blend. You don't want to stick blend for a minute or two and then come back in 20 minutes and see your mixture has separated. So take the time to stick blend. So after stick blending, your mixture is still going to be runny. Don't worry about it, just set it aside. I always check the temperature. So for this uh, batch of uh, cream that I made, it was at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's still too hot to add my um, sensitive ingredients like my preservative, uh, my extracts, vitamin E, fragrance. So I'm going to set it aside and usually I'll set it aside for maybe 20 to 25 minutes just depending but I keep checking on it and I usually add my cool down ingredients uh, below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I, ha I add like my vitamin E, I'll add like my liquid extracts, if I'm using um, fragrance, essential oils, preservatives, I'll add them in this cool down phase. So just pay attention to your ingredients that you're using, whatever ingredients you plan on using, maybe active ingredients, pay attention to what stage they should be added. You don't want to add it in the wrong phase. So the next thing I do is I always check the pH of my um, cream or lotion. Um, one of the emulsifying waxes I use, they recommend a pH between 5 to 7 for the finished product. So I usually check the pH, see if um, I'm within that range. Um, and if I need to adjust it, I'll adjust it with um, my sodium hydroxide solution. But most times I really don't have to do anything to adjust the pH. 
so another thing I'll say is just be patient when you're making your cream your lotion um, give it time to get to its final viscosity thickness um, I know one thing for me I used to be so impatient when I initially made my creams or my lotions I would look at it and I'm thinking why why is it not thick yet why is it not as thick as I want it to be so this one um, in this cream I made this early in the day and I left it alone after a few hours maybe six or seven hours it had thickened up to this um, viscosity so just be patient don't rush um, I usually like to make my creams in the morning give it time uh, for the whole day to thicken up and um, then I'll go on to packaging so for packaging up your cream or your lotion um, the best thing to do is wait for your um, cream to completely cool down before packaging um, you want to avoid condensation in your in your product so if you package up maybe this cream when it's still warm and you cover it up with the lid you are going to have condensation so it's going to affect your the stability of your product it can be a breeding ground for bacteria um, to grow in your product so I always wait just wait for your um, product to get to room temperature before packaging it up or you can just um, you can transfer everything to your jar or your bottle but do not close the um, container so if you um, put your cream in your container leave it open until it has completely cooled down before you cover it up um, that just gives you peace of mind you don't have to worry about you know having that condensation problem and you have a stable product in the end so the last tip I'll share is the choice of butters and oils that you choose to use in your cream or lotion will affect the overall feel on your skin. So if you use a lot of heavy butters, heavy oils, you're going to have a greasy feel on your skin. So just choose the type of oil and butter according to how you want your fi final product to feel. So I always like using lightweight oils. I don't like very heavy butters. So just choose according to how you want your cream to feel on your skin. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found these tips useful. I follow these tips every single time I make my cream or my lotion. I rarely have a product fail, but it does happen. So I can't lie to you guys, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please don't forget to subscribe if you've not. Please turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos I upload. And also please don't forget to like this video because that really helps me out and I will see you in the next one. Bye.